Hello, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. We're doing a tutorial on trains. I'm going to start with the basics. We're going to build up from there. You're going to learn everything there is to know about trains. Okay. So first things first, this is a train, diesel locomotive. This is the thing that makes things go. These cargo wagons are the things that carry things. These guys need fuel and track. Let me show you what I mean by that. I have in my hand a diesel locomotive and I can't put it anywhere. It says, no, nope. now, nah. uh, now when we get close to track, it says, oh, where would you like to put that? We can hit R to rotate the direction, right? See, so I'm going to build my own track over here. So let's just build a track. Just grab the track and lay it down. The tracks can be oriented in uh, four different ways. One, two, three, four. Four different ways, um, straight tracks. Uh, you notice that they, they don't, here, let me show you. They belong in a two by two square that doesn't move. They, they can only be placed, like I can't place a track between these two. I just, you can't, you can't do that. So that's the way tracks work. They're two by two, uh, which is annoying, but hey, it makes it fun. The Kirby bits um, are confusing um, and I can see why. Okay. You see those yellow arrows? That means that your track is connecting. Okay, that's connected. That's not. Okay. Then you take another curvy bit and you go press R, R, R. There's like about 16 or something. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine different ways. Okay, so you go here and it's like it's not connecting. Why not? Just well, use a straight rail. You use a straight rail. That's right. <laughs> what I recommend is building a blueprint. By this time, you should have construction robots. Just build a blueprint of that, those three tracks. You see, it makes it so much easier to lay that down. Otherwise, it takes a long time. I'm ignoring the research. Okay. Um, so to do a loop, let's build a loop. This is the tightest turn you could do in Factorio. That's huge. Okay, it doesn't like quite look so good, but it's huge. Okay, you can go through and count if you want. I don't, I'm not going to count. Okay. So curves are kind of difficult. Um, it's not uncommon that you want to basically say, here I have a track coming like this. And then I want to have that connect to the track going like that. Okay. And so you try to use your Kirby bits and you say, well, I can do that. I can do that. But that only gives me uh, shoot, right? You see? So when you have two things like this, it takes two tracks in between to make it connect. Okay. Um, so that's really complicated. What you have to do in this kind of case, if you're going to connect those two tracks together, first of all, avoid it at all costs. This is what you have to do. You have to go like this. Bam. 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 And then you put two here. You see? That's the only way you can connect those two tracks. It's, it's annoying and frustrating as heck. But those limitations are what make this game fun. Okay, so um, what's that? Okay, so we got our tracks. Let's take our diesel locomotive. Let's put it down. We can flip it R, which direction we want it to face. Once we put it down, you can't. You can still flip it unless it's connected to something. In which case, you can't flip it anymore. Okay. So to connect something to it, you just bring it close. You see those little green circles? That means it's going to connect. Okay. Let me turn this off. Uh, you can connect engines to engines, just like in real life. Back, forward. They don't have to face the same direction. Okay. See? All right, they need fuel. Coal works. You can control left click. If you click on the train and say, where's the coal? This is the train schedule. You got to click this little thing, and then it'll show you what's inside the train. This is your inventory. That's its inventory. So you can do it like that. Okay. So let's get in the train. Press enter to get in, enter to get off. Be very careful. When a train is moving and you're not wearing super strong armor, you will die. You will die. <laughs> moving trains are very dangerous. Enter to get in, enter to get off. You press uh, Which W. Which why you use a card to S. pass train tracks. Well, yeah. <clears throat> S to go back. So when you're driving the train, you can go backwards. And you go backwards pretty slowly. Now. Let's put another train down. One that faces the opposite way. You'll see people do this a lot. Let's put, let's put that in there. Okay, that's a little bit of fuel.
You see, now we're not we're much faster backwards because what's really doing is when you're going backwards, this 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 engine is pulling it. Okay, so uh, wagons. Let's put a wagon on here. You can put stuff in the wagons. You see, they have all That's this space. Lot. They used to only have two rows. Now there's three rows, so you can put all kinds of junk in there. Okay, there. Junk. Wagon junk. You can carry it. Stop. A Christian something something. What is that? The name. Oh, the name of the train? Yeah. Christian Cash Seeing. Yes, he contributed, he gets stuff. So you can load and unload from trains. So let me show you what that looks like. So you see that train track? Put it right next to there. Like that. Give it some power. Now he has some power, okay? Let's watch what happens. Okay, I press enter. So we go back here, and then when we stop, he starts grabbing stuff and unloading. Let's put a chest. Let's put a chest down. Hey, there's a chest. There, he just starts putting stuff in the chest. He just grabs it, just doopy doopy doop. How many can you have? Well, unfortunately trains don't quite line up. So, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, it is funny. <laughs> Trains don't quite line up, which is annoying. But generally, seven, six or seven is about the right number. That's how many you can have. Okay. So, see that? You can use blues like that. You can use yellows. You can use greens, whatever you want to use. Okay, let's go and clean this up. But the problem is, like, something like... You know, the blue inserters are like weird because they're like in the cargo. Yeah, it's kind of inserting itself. So you can put stuff into these chests. Uh, you can also uh, reserve spots. So just like you can in um, your tool belt. You can do the same thing with the cargo wagon. See, and it stops. Okay, one bug that I run into that might not bite you until later is... Um, Real quick, gets rid of it. Okay, is the the fact that inserters sometimes get stuck trying to load something in. Okay, so you want to make sure that the insert is only carrying one type of product. Um, what's something else? Oh, copying. So let's say you have a wagon here where this is going to carry a yellow underground belt, right? Nothing else. Control right click, control left click, you can copy. That's important. That might be useful for you to control what's in your wagon. Might be useful. Not necessarily useful. Um, one thing to note also is. Oops. Auto saving, huh? Watch this. Okay. Let's measure very carefully how wide this is in a file. You see, this is about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wide. See that? Line to line, seven wide. Let's take another one. Let's carefully. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is why people build their train stations so that their trains are horizontal. Because vertically, you're missing one seventh of the possible throughput. So don't build vertical train stations. Uh, unless you really want to. You want to like buck the trend like I used to, but I don't recommend it. It's a big difference, um, especially when, you're, when a, your trains are all about throughput, right? Um, that's how you do that. Uh, programming trains. Let's set up some stations here. So you see I'm putting this guy, he can go on either side of the track, okay? In the rare case where you have two tracks right next to each other, okay, then how do you get it on the other track? You press R. It should be pretty rare. You shouldn't normally have that, but if you do. Okay, so the arrows tell you which way it goes. Okay. And I know the English uh, train meisters. You guys know who you are. You like to build your trains going a certain way on the tracks. I'm going to tell you that Factorio is built so you're doing it the American system where you drive on the right. Okay. And you can tell because you see which direction those arrows are pointing. If you're going to do it the English system, it's going to feel a little bit weird. Okay, so I'm just going to, that's my one bit of, of uh, what do you call it? Um, 
Americanisms. Okay. I, I'm sorry. It's just it's just a fact that I'm gonna just take that all out of there. Skip half to half. Let's give that to you and that to you. Okay. So we have a train station here. This train station's name is Guardsman Day, but we're going to rename this as Train Station A. You see, I typed A in that box and I hit this thing. Now it's called Train Station A, and I can change its name later if I want to. And this will be Train Station B. B. Okay. Now we're going to take this train and click on it once. You see, we have the train schedule. We can add to this A and B. Now we can hit go. Watch what it does. I'm going to make this go slower. So this is 30 seconds. I'm going to do that down to five seconds. That down to five seconds. Five seconds. It should go now. There it goes. You see what it's doing? Okay. That's basically all the train tracks do. Now, if you have a loop, which um, I think it's Colonel Will. I believe it's Colonel Will. I could be wrong. Colonel Will will kill me if it's not him. He probably won't even know I'm making this video. You know, so many tutorials on trains, and Colonel Will builds his trains on the wrong side of the track, but nobody can dare argue with him. Okay, so here we go. We have a loop now. Okay. So let's put this guy down here. I'm going to shift right click and shift left click to copy the station name. And then I'm going to remove this guy. Now watch what he does. Four out of ten loops. Here we go. It's called four out of ten because oftentimes when you're building loops into your factory, you're doing it wrong. This is the basic theory of a loop. Okay. Okay. And now that you're doing it this way, you don't need the two-sided train. We can even put in our thing right there. Put a little exerter into a box. And over here we'll have a little inserter. Why are you not going? Go to station A. What's wrong? Oh, I think I pressed the wrong button. Okay, so we're going to have a little box. We're going to put in here like reds. You see, now the train is carrying things. Um, this is the fat controller mod that's complaining about trains right now. So just ignore that. Something wrong in my factory, but I'm not going to fix it because I'm just doing tutorials. This is basic theory of how you get trains to move stuff for you. And question is why? Why would you do this? Well, the answer is because trains can carry a lot and you can add more wagons and having the train show up every minute with 10,000 resources is going to beat anything else you can build. It's just this is the fastest way to move things over a long period of time. Now, in terms of instantaneous speed, no, you have to wait for a minute for that first shipment to come up. But when it comes, holy cow, will it come? Okay. Now, in one of my previous tutorials, I said don't do buffers. Buffers are bad. Okay. You can do buffers if you want to, but I'm just saying you probably don't want to do buffers. This is the one case where you want buffers. See, trains are gonna arrive every couple minutes with a huge amount of supply. You want to unload that as quickly as possible and gradually push it into your system, okay? As you can see, if let's say I had a process that, that wants one of these guys every second. Well, when the train's not there, it can't get anything. So that's why you have these, these chests, these wooden chests or whatever chests to be the buffer, right? So now I can draw out of this the one red inserter that I need every five seconds or whatever. So that works. Okay, now, let's add another train. We want to be even more productive, right? We want twice the throughput. Let's add another wagon. Let's add some fuel. Dad, I think that was gonna happen. Yep. Bam! What in the world happened? Why did he do that? Why are you destroying this other train? I told him to stop. Okay. It's because it's, he doesn't know. I'm going to shift right click and shift left click. So now these two trains have the same program. It's because signals. We don't have signals. Signals tell trains not to go. They tell them to stop. Okay. Okay. I put the signal down and it's blinking. Why is it blinking? 
because it makes no sense. Signal's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what color I should be because it's covering this entire loop. When I put the other signal down, it'll know what to do. Okay. I like to put signals after the stations, after the stops. There. Now it says red. This one says green. So signals only affect trains. You see? And now we can go. See, he'll stop. He won't go until it turns green. Okay? You'll notice that nobody will go now because they're both red. This is an example of deadlock. Okay? All deadlock is, is the trains are blocking each other. This train is blocking that one. That train is blocking that one. There's a number of ways to resolve deadlock. Here's one. More signals. Right? Oh, you almost got the tail too. You see? Okay, now, if I added more trains, what would happen? You'd get more deadlock, right? See how that works? Okay. Okay, uh, chain signals. What are chain signals for? Well, regular signals are for regular signals. Chain signals are for that. Okay, so um, if you have too many trains, I have four sections. The way to think of the, the signals is it creates a section of track. This section extends from here all the way to here. And it says no train is allowed into this section while there's a train in there. That's all it says. So here's one section, here's another section, here's another section, here's another section. I can add more sections, I'm not gonna do that, okay? But logically, if you have four trains and four sections, you have deadlock, right? Because none of the trains can move into the other section, okay? So you have to keep that in mind. If you have too many trains for your tracks, you need to have more track and more signals. Okay. Obviously, here I can put in sections like basically every, every whatever. I can put it like here, right? And this one's green, even though there's a train at the beginning there. So I can just keep adding more sections like that. But eventually, I'll run out of things. What you need to do is before whatever, you build a section that looks like this. Let me just kind of show you what that is. It's kind of like a waiting buffer zone, okay? Okay, it's gonna go up here. Okay. And this is overkill, obviously, for this little example, but let me just show you what it means. It's kind of a waiting area here. Okay, no path. That's a message you'll see when they can't figure out how to go to the next section. Okay, you see how he came down there? Okay, so let's put a little signal here. Let's put a little signal here. Okay, no path. That means that it can't figure out a way to go. And I can show you another thing that will cause no path. But let's just do this for now. Okay, now I have a design where I can extend. Right? What am I doing? I'm measuring to where. Oof. See, there's. I can put a track down there. That means there's no track there. So I need to do that. Okay? That was measure, me measuring. That's all it was. Let's have another. Oof, man, those guys will kill me. You do not stand on tracks. Standing on tracks is bad. Okay. Oh, he's standing on tracks. I was walking on tracks. Okay, now I can start adding a bunch more trains. Right? How many trains can I have? Well, as many sections as I have. Okay. Let's put another one here. Message. Wait till he goes by. See, I have one, two, <gasps> three, four, five, six, seven. See? You see how that works? Now, this guy is blocking. Let me get some more fuel here. You need to steal some fuel. Yes. You know what? Dude. No, I'm just going to cheat. there five hundred five hundred cow five hundred cow okay so let me let me add another section by the way I think you see things like this in real life 
Um, get that rid of that one. Um, you see ice, like down in the Tacoma Ducks here up in, in Washington, there's this huge section of tracks where there's just all kinds of tracks that are all parallel to each other. I need more tracks. And I think it's used for when trains need to like basically stop and there's like a bunch of trains and stuff. So let me just kind of build this really quick. Okay, so there we go. Now we can have three waiting. Um, this guy can't go because of this guy. So let's go ahead and copy and paste it. Let's go there. Go, go. Okay. There's one more. And now watch what will happen. You see how they wait? And oh uh, yeah, by the way, you can hover over the engine. It'll tell you what it's trying to do. Here it says it wants to go there, but it can't because it's red. This guy says he wants to go there. Now he can go, but it's yellow. Now, chain signals, what do chain signals do? Let me just show you what chain signals do. Bam, bam, bam. I'm replacing these with chain signals, okay. Chain signals say don't go in unless you can get out. So don't go into a section unless you can pass or unless this rail signal is green. You see how this is red? This is still red. As long as that's red, this will be red. The moment that changes to green, these will turn to green. Okay. Watch, here it goes. Green, oh, this guy already went. Yeah. Red. Watch, watch him turn. There he turns to yellow. That guy can go. See how it works? Okay, sometimes you can have multiple outs. Let's do that. Let's see what that would look like. <gasps> that chain is never going to go. Nope, he's never going to go. Let's do this. Is that right? No, that's wrong. Oh, too many. There we go. Let's put some more stations in. Make sure they're facing the right way. Control right click, control left click, control left click. That guy's now gonna go, right? Yep. Yeah. You see, this changed color and allowed him to go because there was one open path available, right? Now, hey, that one's blue. That one's blue because he's hooked up here and he can go this way. But this guy's red because none of the paths open to him are available. See, now this one says only one of the paths is open, so they're blue. This one says your path, the one path that you can go on, is closed. Yeah, see, he chose to come down this middle path because he knew that one was open. This guy's green now because that guy's green. See, he's green. He's going to choose the closest path. Okay. You see that? Again, if you have more trains and sections of track, you will get deadlock. Okay. If, like, two trains are competing for two sections of tracks, or four trains competing for four, or ten for ten, you're going to get deadlock. Okay. So there you go. All right. So um, that's a basic train introduction. Um, common design patterns. Um, how much time are we running with? Bah. 25 minutes. I'll just keep going. OK. That's the basic theory of trains. OK. Design patterns. Let's talk about design patterns. First design pattern. Uh, on long section of tracks, put signals. How often do you need signals? Um, technically, only train lengths, depending on what kind of trains you're running down here. I chose this distance because it's nice and big. So long sections of track, put signals. Put power. Okay, trains are going to go somewhere where they need power, so might as well put power. Put lights, because you like to see. Every once in a while, put radar, so you can see the trains from their map. Let me press the M here so you can see what I'm talking about. There's radar here, and I can see the trains. I can see the trains. I can't see the trains where there's no radar. Okay. 
So long section is a track like that. How close should you build the track? Well, you have a couple options, okay? You can build tracks like this if you're doing the right-handed American system, you know, and then you put your signals on the outside, you see? Like that, okay? That works. It's painful, but it works. Um, it's painful because it doesn't quite line up with the loop that you need to do when you want to turn around or turn left or turn right. Why do I have stuff on the ground there? Oh, you've been dropping it. Yeah, I guess. Maybe I did that with Farl or something. Anyway, um, so lots of people do, if they, especially if they're doing the inside, um, the English style, where they're putting the signals on the inside, they'll do this for obvious reasons, right? Because they need room for the signals, which is why I say the signals, the factory is built for stuff on the outside, okay? And this is kind of nice. There's a little bit of walkway in between. You can put power down the middle and stuff like that. The issue is, if you want to do a loop, you need to kind of basically make this bulb, which is kind of painful, okay? So um, I like to go this size because, let me show you why. Ready? Looping just fits, just fits perfectly, okay? Yes, it uses a lot of space, but by the time you're doing trains, you should be using lots of space, okay? Uh, what else is there to do? Um, oh, intersections. Um, intersections are, we spend all of our time basically thinking about intersections and how to build them. This is basically the design that I like to use, okay? And let me explain to you why I like this design and how it works and stuff. Straight tracks and go down. It just goes on the ground. I can't see it. No, well, I don't care. This is the way I like to do intersections. Basically, this design. You'll notice one thing the tracks do not cross. There's no place where tracks cross. They merge, but they don't cross. Okay? If you're coming in here and you want to go up, you go that way. If you want to go straight through, you could just go straight through. If you want to go down, you go that way. If, even if you want to loop around, you can do that too. And all of these are regular signals. None of these are uh, the chain signals. Okay. You just put regular signals after the track, after the intersection. Um, if I did do crossing, let's say I decided I wanted to build it this way, which I don't. I don't do this. I tried many, many times. I want to build it this way. Let's say. Okay. Let's get rid of this guy. I don't think my trains are coming around this area, so I think I'm pretty safe. Okay, so. You see this? Okay, first of all, these guys get confused. They're like, what? I don't understand. Okay. Like, now he's not so confused anymore. It stopped that green. Okay. <laughs> now, green. if your train comes in here and blocks this section, then these trains can't go. And that's just annoying as heck. So you can put a chain signal in. Say, hey, don't go in unless you can clear that. However, the trick that people forget is that the train, let me just kind of walk you through this. Let's get a train engine. Let me show you what happens. Watch the color of the signals, okay? Let me just get one close here so you can see. Actually, we should probably put a chain signal up here as well. There. Okay, he's not happy. He's still not happy. Now he's happy. Okay, there we go. Yay. Watch the colors. So as I approach the intersection, you see it's green because this is green. Okay. Then, bam. This guy turns red because this is occupied. If this were a regular signal, it would turn red as well. Okay. This is green, so it keeps going. Okay. You see how this is red? It's red because you can't get through. You see, it's still red. Now it turns green. Once I clear that guy, it turns green. Okay, so if you were to build an intersection this way, it looks like it might work, but it won't. And the reason why is because this will turn green the moment this turns green. What you really need to do is you need to change all of these things to chain signals, basically. Okay, chain signal. This guy, you can leave that there, but you need to make sure that there is a train length of space afterwards. That means this train can actually go in and all the way in. Otherwise, if you have something like this, let me show you what that. Okay, see that? 
if I had a train here. It's green. This guy will go forward. And if he has like 100 cars in the end, that doesn't quite work the way I wanted it to, but you get the idea. He is going to pull forward. Oh, look, it's green. It's green. It's green. It's green. It's green. Okay, I'll stop here. And he's blocking the intersection. And the way you resolve that, the way you fix that, so he doesn't block the intersection, is you have to make sure that there's enough room for the biggest train to get all the way out. Okay? See, now it's red. Okay? See, the only way he can go forward is if there's nothing in this section here. Okay? That's something to think about. Uh, what else about trains? So intersections. People like to build intersections. Intersections get fantastically complicated. I like to go for simple. Uh, multiple lanes. Okay. Let's go down here and talk. The train station that it's going to choose is always the closest one. It's always going to choose the closest one that's available. Okay. Now, you see he's going to go to the top. No, he's not. Okay. So this guy, when he goes, he's going to go to the top one, I think. Let's actually do this. Let's put some signals in. Oosh. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. I'll tell you about that in a second. You almost died. Okay. They're always going to choose, I believe, this one because he's closest. If you count the number of squares he has to travel, this one's always the closest. Yeah, they're always going to choose him. Now, another bug. Let's say this guy's stuck, right? He can't go anywhere, but he wants to go somewhere. It'll mark this station as open. Okay, so you'll see a problem where you have stations with the same name and they're always choosing the same station. That's because this, the train here wants to go, but he can't. And so it's marking the station as open, even though it's really not. Okay, another bug people have, this. No path, no path, right? Why? Because when you put a signal like that, it says you can only go one direction and that's not the right direction. You can do this. If you put signals directly opposite to each other, it says you can go both directions through there. Okay. You see? Okay. So I have to be careful about that. Anyway, I don't know what else to say about trains. Um, train station design is really interesting. Something that you can consider. There's many different designs out there. Um, I'm sure your imagination can come up with like 10,000 different things if you give it enough time. Uh, so experiment with that. Um, be sure to fuel your trains with coal or something. Um, oh boy. Look what happened here. A little train jam. <gasps> yeah, that's what it was complaining about. Let's see why it's getting hung up. Let's see if we can find the head here. So this guy, he's trying to turn around, but he can't because this guy's blocking his way. And this guy's trying to go, but he can't because this guy's blocking his way. And this guy's trying to go forward, but he can't because this guy's blocking his way, and this guy's trying to go forward, and he can't because this guy's blocking his way, and this guy can't go forward because this guy's blocking his way. And this guy can't go forward because this guy's blocking his way. Hey, it's going around you. Yeah, it's the train jam. This is a 100% train jam. Okay. Sometimes you just need to get rid of one signal and it's all fixed. Sometimes. Sometimes it's not that simple. Let's try that out. This is perfect timing, by the way. I don't know exactly what causes this train jam or how to fix it at this point. It might, it'll take a little bit of thought. It. I think I did. Yeah, you fixed um, it. Yeah, they're, they're going to start going now. Um, I'm thinking maybe... No. It's just there's a loop here where there's just too many trains trying to go around the loop. Maybe multiple lanes. Yeah, I kind of built these guys with the, the idea that I could build multiple lanes if I really wanted to. So they can go around each other. I think maybe what the deal is, is that the loop is just too small. I shouldn't have them looping here, I should have them looping down here. Dad? Yes, JJ. Can I play Mountain Boy the War Band? No. Aww. Okay, so yeah, it's getting undone now. It's coming apart now. 
Yeah, so uh, too many trains, not enough sections needs to train jams. And the way to do that is you make bigger sections. And you use more track. And you have these little waiting areas. Speaking of which, this should not be like that. You know. This is fun. Why are you not going? Dad, that's because it's the end. That's the end. This guy does not have any iron ore at all. Here. You, I want you to go up there to the iron. So you're going to... Yeah, I don't want you to go there anymore. And you too, what are you doing? Yeah, you're getting iron plate. You're fine. Yeah, but this guy was going to the main base and getting iron ore. Yeah, I just have too many trains. I need to build more waiting area. Which is why I don't like this design, because it's... I basically can't expand it. You know, and there's this big block right here where everybody's competing for them. It just, just doesn't work out. It just doesn't work out. So, there's my train tutorial. I hope it helps. I don't know if it does or not. If you have specific questions, ask me. I'll, I'll try to answer them, and, and hopefully over time we'll put together... I'll be able to put together the minimum tutorial that's needed to get people started with trains. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and bye-bye. Oh, yeah, questions, ask them below in the comments. So, thanks. Bye.